Welcome back, friends. I've got a quick, easy and fun one for you today. I'll take an ordinary snapshot like this and transform it by adding this eye-catching digital framing. Let me show you how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. I started with this image of three beautiful young women I downloaded from pixabay.com. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to follow along. Anyway, I started by clicking on the Selection Brush tool in the left-hand toolbar. I raised my brush head size up by clicking the right square bracket key a few times and then I painted over my subjects. Once I had a good selection, I clicked on the Refine button on the top toolbar. I'll use the matte adjustment brush to go over these ladies' hair a bit to pick up the fine details. When using the matte adjustment brush, I've found it seems to work better when just doing smaller sections at a time. Then, I noticed this bit on the girl's shoulder that wasn't included. So, I'll switch to the foreground adjustment brush and paint that in. Alright, that looks good. I'll just go to the output drop-down, select New Layer with Mask, and then click Apply to put these women into their own new layer. Next, I'm going to replace the background with solid black. To do this, I'll go to Layer in the menu and select New Fill Layer. Mine's already set to black, but you can change that by using one of the options in the color panel in the top right corner of the studio. Anyway, I'll click and drag this layer from the top to the bottom of the layer stack so it shows up behind the ladies. Next, I'll click on the arrow-shaped move tool in the left-hand toolbar and select the cutout layer. Then I'll grab the corner node and drag it in a bit to resize the image and move it into the center. Then, I'll go to the Shapes drop-down in the left-hand toolbar and choose the Rounded Rectangle tool. Again, I'll use the corner nodes to drag the shape into position so that it lines up directly over my other image. Alright, next, I'll click the Stroke color box in the top toolbar and use the color wheel to turn the outline into a nice bright pink color. Then, I'll click on the Stroke Width slider and raise it up to where I like it. About 13 or 14 pixels should do. Okay, to see the women underneath, I'll just go back to the fill color box and reduce the opacity slider all the way to the left to reveal them. All right, next I'll work on giving the frame a neon effect. First, I'll select the rectangle layer and click Command or Control J to duplicate it. Then I'll go to the Live Filters button and click on Gaussian Blur and I'll raise that slider all the way up to 100 pixels. Then I'll click and drag the blurred layer below the non-blurred layer. Okay, next I'll select the top rectangle layer and I'll duplicate it by clicking Command or Control J. Then with the top layer selected, I'll go back up to the stroke color box and I'll change the color to a light pink and I'll go to the Stroke Width slider and reduce it by about half so that you can see the outlines of the other rectangle layers below it. This gives the border a lovely neon-type glow effect. I think that looks great. But I have to trim up the bottom part of the image. I'll do this by selecting the mask on the cutout layer, I'll click on the paintbrush tool and make sure the color is set to black, which, when painted on a normal mask, will remove pixels. I'll just paint over the corners to remove the parts I don't want. You just have to be careful not to go too far over the neon edge. It does help to click the left square bracket a few times to give yourself a small brush head to work with. Alright, one more thing here, and then I'll let you go. I just want to give our girls here a little tilt. To do this, I'll hold the shift key while clicking the top layer and the second to bottom layer to select all in between. Then I'll right click on them and scroll down to group to group them together. Then I can use the move tool to drag the little handlebar at the top to tilt the frame to the left and center it. And so yeah, there you go. That looks great. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine.
There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.